I bought some books. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So here we are with another book haul. I just couldn't resist a lot of these. It's a fairly sizable book haul and I have just bought so many books over the past couple of months and I've actually run out of space on my shelves. So I went online to Ikea and I was gonna get one of the Billy Bookshelf uh, kind of corner units because I'm just amassing books so quickly and there's not a Billy bookshelf to be found in all of Alberta. So I don't know if you guys are experiencing shortages like that, but here it's just so hard to get furniture right now. So I gotta try to cut back on my book buying because I literally have no space and there's stacks of books all over the floor. So thank God I have a very supportive partner and he knows that books are my love and so I'm really really appreciative of that but honestly I think I've got to start cutting back because I'm just running out of space here so let's go through what I got I have everything in this haul is going to be vintage used and I have a fairly sizable stack of Stephen King that I got and I was so excited to get these books. I've been looking for Stephen King hardcovers everywhere and it's so hard to get them in good condition and I was just so so happy to get this stack of books. So jumping right in here we're going to start off with an R.L. Stein. So this is Curtains and I hadn't heard about this one before. It's a standalone book, so it's not part of like Fear Street or anything. And uh, this sounds really, really good. It's super short, you know, just your standard R.L. Stein length novel. And it's about a girl named Renna. And she goes to, I believe it's a summer camp uh, that has to do with drama and Broadway. And she is cast as the lead in their play. And she has secrets that she's kind of kept buried for most of her life, but the very enthusiastic director of this play starts to bring things out in her uh, that have to do with her emotions and all of that kind of stuff. So it's kind of digging up these dark secrets that she has kept buried. And it says, when the stage blood turns out to be real, Rena knows the play is over and the horror has just begun. So that sounds fantastic. Like I said, I hadn't heard about this one at all. Um, this is the first time I'd seen it, so I snatched it up right away and really, really excited to read this one. I might try to stick this one into somewhere in my TBR sometime soon. And next up, I have a couple of Christopher Pike. So still working on getting my Christopher Pike collection kind of rounded out. I have a few more that I have to get, and both of these are sequels that I needed for the collection. So we have Remember Me 2, the return and it has this wonderful um, die cut lettering the E is kind of bent a little bit here but that's okay these books are so old so it's you know you can kind of expect that when you have these die cut covers that they're gonna get damaged so um, really excited to have another one of the remember me and I'm not going to read any of the synopses of anything that's a sequel because a lot of times it gives away stuff from the first books. But what I love about this is when you open it up and you have this step back cover and just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So creepy. So excited to have that one. And the other one that I found is Final Friends book three, The Graduation. So on the front it says, the truth was neither black nor white but a horrible shade of gray. So again, I'm not gonna read the synopsis of this, but look at those wonderful 90s outfits. And you have a kind of chalk drawing on the floor there. So murder mystery, I think, is what we're looking at with this one. And this one was from 1989, so this one is even older than this one. So, I mean, these books are getting up there right now. This is almost as old as I am. So excited to have another one for the graduation. I believe I just need one more. I have part two, so I just need the graduation part one, I believe. So I'll keep my eye out for the whole series and then I can read them all together. So up next, I have a couple of books by Mary Downing Hahn. So this one is called The Old Willis Place, A Ghost Story. So nice creepy cover art. So this follows uh, Diana and her little brother Georgie 
and they have been living in the woods behind this old crumbling mansion for a long long time and for whatever reason they have a very strict set of rules that keeps them from revealing themselves to anyone in the outside world and it says when a new caretaker and his young daughter Alyssa come to live there Diana is tempted to break the mysterious rules for the first time in hopes of making a new friend she and Georgie learn quickly though that breaking the rules can have deadly consequences so that one sounds really good. I don't think this is a very old book. Uh, it seems fairly new. Yeah, this is from 2004. But either way, sounds like a great ghost story. And then the other one by Mary Downing Hahn has this great ghostly sort of cover. Hopefully you can see that there, this ghostly girl standing in the snow. It's called One for Sorrow. So this one follows a young girl named Annie and Annie is starting at a new school and it's the year 1918. So right when she starts, she meets Elsie Schneider. And Elsie is kind of one of those girls who is kind of clingy, kind of annoying. And right from the get go, she claims that she is Annie's best friend and she has just clung to Annie and she just wants to be around her all the time. So Annie starts to befriend some of the other girls in the school and she realizes that the other girls really don't like Elsie. She is a German Hun, so she is on the opposite side of all of this war that is going on. Of course, like I said, it takes place in 1918 and Annie soon joins in um, all of the bullying against poor Elsie. So Elsie is really being bullied and berated and put down by all of the girls in the school. And eventually she ends up dying of, I believe, Spanish influenza. Yeah. And so Elsie dies and it says her claim on Annie's friendship lives on. And so does her anger at Annie and the others who made her life miserable. She will be Annie's friend and she will have her revenge. Annie won't get rid of her so easily this time. So looks like Elsie is now a vengeful ghost and it the story just of this just completely sucked me in because of course this is against the backdrop of World War One, and I'm really interested to see how all of that sort of history is kind of put into this story as well. So really, really sounds good. So this one seems fairly recent as well. I believe it was 2016 that this one came out. So really, really recent, but totally right on my alley. Ghost stories set against war times. So this one sounds really, really good too. So I was so happy to find so many used books in such great condition. And I literally got these for two to three dollars a piece. So this one is a little bit outside of the norm of what we usually talk about here. So this is called Suicide Notes by Michael Thomas Ford. So this is the first time I had heard about this book, but the person who was selling it had a picture of the back and the synopsis sounded really really intriguing to me. So this follows 15 year old Jeff and on New Year's Day Jeff wakes up in the hospital but not just in the hospital he wakes up in a psychiatric ward and he notices that he has bandages on his wrists so obviously we can see where the story is going but he has absolutely me no memory of what led up to these events so he doesn't know what happened he doesn't know how he hurt himself or anything like that so of course he is kind of incarcerated in the psych ward and he has to do you know talk to his therapists and all of that kind of stuff and then it says on the back a funny thing happens as jeff's 45 day sentence drags on he realizes he is not as different from his fellow patients as he first thought compelling witty and refresh refreshingly real Suicide Notes is a darkly comic novel that examines the fuzzy line between normal and the rest of us. So I love anything that has to do with mental illness. Of course, being bipolar myself, I've spent time on a psych ward. So I was really, really interested to pick this up and see kind of the parallels between what goes on here and my own experience and all of that kind of thing. So I was really, really intrigued by this book. Like I said, hadn't heard about it before. I don't know anything about this author. So if you've heard of this one, let me know down in the comments. But uh, this one seemed really, really intriguing to me. So next up we have The Collector by K.R. Alexander. And this is another one that is fairly recent, but what I love about the cover of this book, I don't know if you can pick it up on, on camera here, um, but the cover is spot varnished so that the doll's eyes look like they're glowing or shining. So that 
dragged me right in right off the bat because of course creepy dolls is one of my things. Love creepy dolls. So this follows Josie and she has to move in with her grandmother and her grandmother has three rules. Number one, never leave your windows open after dark. Number two, no dolls in the house. And number three, never ever go by the house in the woods. So Josie is a little bit spooked out by all of this and of course living with her grandmother, new house, and these creepy ass rules. So she makes a new friend. Her name is Vanessa. And Vanessa starts leading Josie into the woods that her grandmother specifically said to stay away from. And it says on the back here, when Vanessa invites Josie back to her house to hang out, Josie doesn't question it. Not even when Vanessa takes her into the woods and down an old dirt road toward the very house her grandmother had warned her about. The house that has been calling to her. So creepy dolls, creepy houses, creepy friends that are leading you into the woods. I'm all here for it. I've seen a couple of other people funny enough pick this book up at almost the exact same time I did. So that was really interesting. And this is another new one. It came out in... Uh, 2018. So this is a new one, but creepy dolls, I'm sucked right in. So I'll let you guys know how that one goes. And then next up, I have three ghost story books. So all of these are in part of the same series. So we have Haunted Kids, True Ghost Stories by Alan Zulo. And it says on the back, have you ever heard what happened to a boy who knocked over a cemetery gravestone? Here's a spine-chilling collection of true ghost stories that happen to real kids. But beware, these eerie stories may keep you up reading long past bedtime. So really little tiny collection, but I love how it's kids ghost stories that are in here because often we see ghost stories from an adult's perspective. So really, really excited for this collection. So this is uh, Haunted Kids. And then this one is Haunted Campers. And it says, on an abandoned country lane, a camper comes upon a horse-drawn funeral procession. He later learns what occurred on that spot more than a hundred years ago. So this collection has to do with specifically with people who are on vacation or camping, which I love because I used to camp a lot when I was a kid and the woods are a creepy place. So excited about that one. And then the other one in the series is Totally Haunted Kids, True Ghost Stories. So this one says, when two sisters fall into an abandoned mine, they're led to safety by their grandfather, who then suddenly disappears. When the girls return home, they learn that their grandfather died hours before their rescue. So that's just a description of one of the stories in here and again this is you know from the perspective of all kids so totally excited to have all three of these for the collection I haven't looked it up yet but I'm not sure if there are any more in this series um, it's definitely something I'm gonna look into because I love little books like this they're just great to sit down and read the whole thing in an afternoon so excited to have those ones for my ghost story collection and a few months ago I had picked this one up secondhand it's called Asylum by Matt Madeline Rue, and this is about a young boy, well, 16 years old, so a young man named Dan, and he gets accepted into a really prestigious program, but when he goes to the school, he learns that they have to stay in a dorm room that was formerly an asylum. So he and his friends start digging into the history, and of course, they discover secrets that link Dan and his friends to the asylum's dark past because it turns out that Brookline, the asylum, was no ordinary psych ward, and there are some secrets that refuse to stay buried. So I already had this one on the shelf, and then I went to Value Village, and they had Sanctum and Catacomb, which are also books in the collection. So typically when I want to get into a series, I usually only buy the first one to see if I actually like it, but these books are only a couple of dollars, so I just went ahead and picked them up. And this one is, it's a hardback, and it's Escape from Asylum, so this is the prequel to the series. So excited to have all of those, and I just love anything that has to do with boarding schools, and of course boarding schools that end up being haunted. They're always a great, great time, so excited to have those ones for the collection as well.
And then, like you guys know, there's a couple of Etsy shops that I'm always stocking, and both were having a sale, so I decided to stock up on Babysitter's Club books that I'm missing out of the collection. So these all came in great, great condition, and I'm getting close to having at least kind of the main portion of the series being completed. So I think I might start reading those pretty soon, and I wanna make sure to do them in order of publication because they do have the super specials, but they kind of came out, you know, in between the actual series. So I want to make sure that I read those in order as well. So here we have uh, number 18, Stacy's Mistake. Number 32, Christy and the Secret of Susan. Number 37, Dawn and the Older Boy. And I mean, just look at these guys. I mean, it's just quintessential 80s, 90s. I just love the covers of these books. It just brings back so many memories, especially with those sort of Letterman's jackets and stuff. It's just wonderful. So we also have number 40, Claudia and the Middle School Mystery. So when I was growing up, anything that had anything to do with a mystery or a ghost story or whatever, I gobbled it right up. So I do remember this one specifically. And then we have number 41, Mary Ann versus Logan. And if you're a BSC fan, you know all about the drama with Mary Ann and Logan the whole time during the series. And then number 44, Dawn and the Big Sleepover. And on the front, this one says, win a new Babysitter's Club video. So I'm hoping that in the back it has like entry forms and stuff like that that you can send in. I just love stuff like that in books and you can see the dates and stuff on them. Then we have number 62, Christy and the Worst Kid Ever. And then one of the super specials, this is super special number seven, Snowbound. So that's definitely going to be a winter read for me. Like I said, I'm gonna hold off because I kind of want to pick up the wintry sort of super specials and read them over the holidays, but I'm going to restrain myself and read these in publication order. So lots of Babysitter's Club to add to the collection, and I think in 2022 I'm going to start finally picking up some of these and reading them because I can at least get the series started and it's going to take me a while to get through them, but I think it will be fun to get through the series and then maybe do a ranking on which ones are my favorites. Okay, so that's it for the kind of various used books and vintage books, and I'm going to get into the Stephen King right now. So I was so, so excited to find this collection. Um, I got these really at next to nothing for what I got because the guy was selling his entire Stephen King collection for $40, which is about $32 American, and I just... I had to do it. I couldn't pass it up. So I was really excited to get this version of the Night Shift because I do have another version of Night Shift, but this is a specific cover that I wanted. So a couple of these paperbacks aren't in great condition, but they do have the original artwork. And so I wanted to make sure I scoop them up right away. So excited to have that one. So what I'll probably do is keep this one intact and use the other one as my reading copy. And next up we have Cujo. So funny enough, I haven't read a whole lot of Stephen King. I've watched a lot of the, his movies, especially the classic ones. And Cujo is just so wonderfully cheesy. Um, and this book was printed way back in 1981. So, I mean, it just has this wonderful vintage cover. Like I said, it's not in the best condition, but you know, he was selling these books for ne next to nothing. So I had to scoop that one up. And then along the same lines is Firestarter. So it has this wonderful cover art here. And this one was from 1980. So, I mean, this book is even older than I am and I'm sure if I was really, really careful, I could probably get that sticker off the front, hopefully. The only unfortunate thing is it does have a um, library stamp on the inside, but uh, with a lot of these books, what I'm finding is buying the used ones, they either have library stamps or um, somebody has written their names in them. So that's really unfortunate, but still really, really happy to have these originals. And then the last Stephen King hardcover I got was the Bachman books. So, just a little 
trade paperback kind of. So I haven't read any of the Bachman books, so I was happy to get that one along with the others. And then getting into the main part of this collection, so I'm not going to go through the synopses of all of these because we'll be here for a very, very long time. Uh, but this is another Richard Bachman book, so this is Blaze. And it just has this wonderful cover art here with a spooky sort of uh, isolated house and the tire tracks going up in snow. I mean, it's just fantastic. So it says here that this is the last of the Richard Bachman novels, and it was recently recovered and published for the first time. Stephen King's dark half may have been saved for last. So I mean, that totally has me intrigued. And just by the cover art here, I'm kind of getting like shining sort of vibes. Just the middle of winter and the sort of isolation horror. Maybe I'll put this one in sometime uh, in our eight months of winter here in Canada. So excited to have that one. And all of these books are in such good condition. Oh my goodness. So next up is Gerald's Game. And it says in here, Stephen King gives us his most ambitious work yet, a novel of brilliant intensity, excruciating suspense, and uncanny insight into the dark corners of the indomitable female psyche. And this sounds so creepy. So just reading the very last couple of lines here, it says, women alone in the dark are like open doors. And if they cry out for help, who knows what dread things may answer. So um, looks like this is a sort of kidnap sort of story, kidnapping story, and it has to do a lot with sort of the psyche from the point of view of a woman. So that sounds really, really interesting. Like I said, I haven't read a whole lot of Stephen King, so these books seem really, really intriguing to me. So let me know what you guys think of this one. Now, I do have quite a few in the Dark Tower series, and of course I couldn't split up this lot. I had to take them all, so... Um, the Dark Tower series doesn't really appeal to me, so I might be reselling these, but we'll see how it goes. So here is the Dark Tower 4 Wizard and Glass. So I have to say, though, that I really love the covers on some of these books. It's quite spectacular. So there's that one. And then uh, this one is the Dark Tower, the Gunslinger. So it has that same sort of castle in the background here. So this is more of a fantasy um, series, it seems to be, than a horror and then um, we have Full Dark, No Stars, and the cover on this is just really, really intriguing to me. It says, in Big Driver, a cozy mystery writer named Tess encounters the stranger along a back road in Massachusetts when she takes the shortcut home after a book club engagement. Violated and left for dead, Tess plots a revenge that will bring her face to face with another stranger, the one inside herself. So it looks like these are separate stories kind of in a collection and um, it has to do with, you know, the darkness inside yourself kind of from what I'm gathering here. So that one seems very, very intriguing to me. And then we have The Cell. So this one, of course, uh, kind of revolves around cell phones and it says there's a reason cell rhymes with hell and of course that is a very topical kind of conversation so that one looks pretty good and then we have bag of bones a novel and it says on the back a haunted love story so let me know down in the comments below what's your guys's favorite stephen king novel so it says here as vivid and enthralling as king's most enduring works bag of bones resonates with what Amy Tan calls the witty and obsessive voice of King's powerful imagination. So that sounds pretty cool. And I mean, the cover art is just fantastic. It's so haunting. So I think that's definitely one I might keep and try for myself. And of course the classic Dolores Claiborne and about a woman who is a murderer. And it says, she's an old Yankee bitch, Dolores Claiborne, foul temper, foul mouth and foul life. So I haven't seen the movie of this even yet. I know my mom has, she says it's really, really good. Um, so excited to have this one as part of the collection and it's definitely one that I wanna read. And next up we have Hearts in Atlantis. So this is new fiction and it says on the inside, although it is difficult to believe, the 60s are not fictional, they actually happened. 
and it says King's newest fiction is composed of five interconnected sequential narratives set in the years from 1960 to 1999, and each story is deeply rooted in the 60s, and each is haunted by the Vietnam War. So that sounds really, really interesting for sure. I love when historical events are kind of wound into fiction like this, so that one's definitely I want to check out for myself. And then we have Everything is Eventual, 14 Dark Tales. So I have a couple of short story collections in here, so this is one of them. And then one of the others is Nightmares and Dreamscapes. And this is a beautiful copy, like I don't even know if this book was ever read. It still sounds wonderful, it looks wonderful and it's just, it looks beautiful on a shelf. I've always wanted to have a Stephen King hardcover collection, which is funny because I really haven't read a whole lot of his books, but they just look so stunning sitting on a shelf. So really, really excited that this copy is in such good condition. And then we have this one, um, Needful Things, which of course is a classic. And I already have a copy of Needful Things, but this one is in much better condition than the one that I have. So I'll probably resell that one. And this one is just absolutely stunning. Um, again, I don't even know if these were ever read. So definitely wanna get into this one as well. Another one I haven't seen the movie, so this one's new to me. And this one I don't have a whole lot to say about because there's no synopsis on it. All I know is that it's from 2009 and I believe it's probably the chunkiest one in this collection. So I'm gonna have to read up a little bit on this one, see what it's about. And then we have another one in the Dark Tower series. So this is a hardback and it's Dark Tower 5, Wolves of the Kala. So again, I'll have to look up more about the Dark Tower series. Uh, it's more of a fantasy than a horror. So I don't think I have any real interest in them, but we'll have to see how it goes anyway. And then another one in the Dark Tower. Uh, this is Dark Tower 6, Songs of Susanna. And this one is Dark Tower 7, The Dark Tower. So this one is also a big boy. And then of course the classic, Insomnia. And this one is one of those ones, like I said, it just looks spectacular on a shelf with the white and the red. And interestingly enough, and I didn't know this because I haven't read this book, it is also set in the town of Derry, Maine, which of course is where it takes place. So there's kind of a dark streak that runs through Derry. So um, it'll be interesting to see how the two stories sort of interconnect. And I've always wanted to read this book. I don't know why it draws me in so much. I think it's just the beauty of the red and white cover that's the only thing that I can think but let me know down below if you guys have read this book and if it's any good so next up is a collaboration so this is Stephen King and Peter Straub black house and it sounds like this one is a pretty good murder mystery so it says when a series of gruesome murders occur in western Wisconsin that are reminiscent of those committed several decades ago by madman named Albert Fish the killer is dubbed the fisherman and Jack's buddy, the local chief of police, begs Jack to help the inexperienced force find him. But are these new killings merely the work of a disturbed individual? Or has a mysterious and malignant force been unleashed in this quiet town? So Peter Straub, of course, is a legend as well. So that sounds really interesting to me. And of course, I know all about the murders of Albert Fish. So again, it'll be interesting to see the parallels that are brought into this one. And then the last two in this collection. So this was a lot of Stephen King books for 40 bucks. Um, so we have the Tommy Knockers which is another one that since I've been a teenager, I've always wanted to read. And I think it's because of the little poem that's on the inside flap of the book. And it says, late last night and the night before, Tommy knockers, Tommy knockers, knocking at the door. I want to go out, don't know if I can, cause I'm so afraid of the Tommy knocker man. So classic, classic story. Um, from what I heard, this one isn't one of his best, but I've always wanted to read it. So I was excited to have that one in the collection. And then this one is the one that I'm absolutely the most excited about. So it's The Stand. And I just love the cover art on this book. And a few months ago, I got a trade paperback of this, but the thing is huge for one, and it's not in very good condition. And this one is just gorgeous. I mean, 
like I said, I don't even know if half of these books were even read. Um, they look like they just came out of a bookstore. So I was so, so excited to finally have a nice copy of The Stand. And this is another one. It's a classic Stephen King story and it's definitely one that I'm gonna hang on to and eventually someday I'll get through this one. So there you guys go. That is the end of my book haul. So this is everything that I've hauled in the past month or so. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these used ones, the Mary Downing Hahn or the Christopher Pike. And of course, let me know what your favorite Stephen King is. And I'm so excited to have these for the collection so I can finally start reading the stories from the great master. Again, thanks guys for watching the video. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.